Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette here with the next video, and today we're talking about defending post update Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11, Town Hall 12. We have this new content the Bat Spell, the Stone Slammer, the Ice Golem, all these new offensive tools that people are going to be trying to use against your bases. So, looking at base building, what techniques can we use to defend these new things that are pretty darn powerful? Um, we're going to be looking at a, a good example here, uh, but if you guys have been watching the sneak peek videos and even maybe seeing in some of your wars that are just starting now, the Bat Spell and the Stone Slammer especially are very powerful and they're very good at taking out certain sections of a base that's not equipped to defend against them. So there are ways to prevent the Bat Spell from taking out a huge section of your base and the stone slammer from getting too much value as well and that's what this video is for so we're focusing on a town hall 11 as our example base but like i said these very same techniques apply town hall 10 through town hall 12 so these are very general tips that you can implement implement in your base building right now let's get started though um talking first about the bat spell something that is being used from just my very earliest estimates and playing with it in the developer build, it's being used mainly to take out small sections of a base uh, in a Laloon attack. And typically what the attacker's trying to get are air defenses, single inferno towers, the eagle if it's town hall 11, town hall 12, and possibly even the defensive town hall. Um, it, being able to take that out is good value for then a later Laloon attack. Also the CC's not lured, so these are typically used during Electron attacks, where you have the Electro Dragon in the Battle Blimp that you clone, or with like a Sui Hero in something that really is Mass Lalo, you're able to take out a section with the Bats, and that gets a lot of value. So how do we defend the Bat Spell from taking down those air defenses, those single Infernos, because that's what they want. Not the cannons as much. We're not going to probably see people taking out cannons with Bat Spells and like hogging it or something. The value is just not the same. So... The air defenses are very bad at taking out bats. The bats spawn fast, they're too quick, the air defenses are slow, they have too much damage per shot, they don't shoot fast enough. The best thing at taking out those bats are the multi-infernos, and I'm saying that you want to have both your infernos, um, if you're a Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11, on multi, and probably at least two of them on multi if you're a Town Hall 12. And this is to protect your air defenses, protect your eagle, protect those valuable buildings from being taken out by a swarm of bat spells because nothing defends quite like the multi-inferno you can see here on this base we have all air defenses except for maybe this one is probably kind of close here the range uh, extends to like right about there um, pretty much all air defense is protected we also have a um, a wizard tower as well that is right in this middle area kind of guarding these two uh, air defenses and that's the next best thing at defending against the bat spell is the wizard tower it's high in hit points and it also um, does that splash damage that can take out bats a little quicker than like an expo and archer tower something that doesn't do splash damage so oftentimes people say well keep your wizard towers away from your air defenses that way the lava hounds in a laloon attack won't tank the wizard towers the wizard towers can target balloons which is what you want them to do and that's true i have the rest of the wizard towers away from air defenses around the back end of the base but i want to keep one wizard tower here along with the multi infernos to help defend these valuable air defenses um you don't want to give up that value to a bat spell if you have an inferno on single it's just too easy for a bat spell um combination just a few bat spells to take it out so that's that's why i like having both infernos on multi and then having all the air defenses um, in range for the most part of those multi infernos. Now, I also like keeping the town hall opposite my inferno towers and my air defenses. The reason of that is that oftentimes, especially at town hall 11, but at town hall 10 and 12 as well, people like to do a queen walk or some kind of healers as part of their kill squad. The queen walk might meet up with a uh, a big kill squad and then you get the healer switch onto giants or bowlers or people are doing like an HGHB or they're doing a queen charge with the wall wrecker but either way the wall wrecker always goes opposite the town hall um, to get that big push to get the angle right and you want to have your air defenses there to shoot down healers not giving them the value of like a queen walk leading into a, a big kill squad so the air defenses are very effective opposite the town hall for shutting down those healer 
openings with kill squads or queen charges. And because we want to keep the multi-infernos by the air defenses, that means the infernos are also going to be opposite the town hall for the most part, which I'm okay with. It makes it tough, especially if they're kind of on either side. Um, the attacker kind of has to choose one side. They can't get both multi-infernos as long as they're far enough apart in one kill squad push up the middle. Uh, we can see the eagle is also well protected. Uh, both multi-infernos can just about reach it. Plus we have the queen, wizard tower, and quite a bit of other air targeting defenses that are in the area. The wizard tower is probably the most important there that can help take out bats as needed. So it's going to be a huge investment if the attacker wants to drop bat spells and get any kind of value because we have such good splash air coverage around the base here. Now, Town Hall 12 is a moment to talk about them. If you're a Town Hall 12, you might be worried your Town Hall is going to get taken out by bat spells. I honestly wouldn't worry too much about it. The Town Hall is so high in hit points, plus you have to use an Earthquake spell, that's one extra spell, just to activate it so the bats recognize it as a defense. And in my testing I did with the bat spell, you can go check out my actual bat spell sneak peek video where there's the actual footage of it. Um, it really... The bats have a tough time with the town hall. It shoots quick. It has multiple targets. You can keep a wizard tower nearby, even a multi-inferno. But really, as long as there's a few other defenses nearby to help out, I don't think people are going to be using bats to take out your town hall. They're mainly going for those cheap trades. For example, if this inferno here was on single, um, this would be a really easy bat spell, not counting that air sweeper, which might be a little trouble. Um, just to take out these two defenses with just what two bat spells could probably do it, maybe three. Um, and that's not a trade you want to give up. So that's the main thing. Don't give up that easy value with the air defenses, Inferno Towers, Eagle. That's what people want from the bat spells. Um, so that's what you're trying to defend against. Okay, I think that pretty much covers what I want to talk about for bat spells. Moving on, we have this new thing called the Stone Slammer. And I know what you guys are already thinking as I was talking about the bat spells. Okay, Bisect the Tron, if you keep your... Uh, Inferno Towers on, on Multi, what's going to be defending the Stone Slammer? Because if, if you guys saw some footage of it or have even seen it in your own wars now that the update's out, the Stone Slammer just kind of bounces along, takes out defenses, and it takes a lot of air DPS to actually get it taken out. So you want to avoid people being able to either use that as part of a queen charge or like a kill squad or using it on its own to get too much value. So... The way I set up this base is we have pretty much all the air defenses on this side, and that's a significant amount of damage going to the Stone Slammer. So this side already is in good shape, plus we have the Air Sweepers, which I think is your best asset at defending the Stone Slammer is the Air Sweepers, because it doesn't move that fast. It moves like about the speed of a healer, I think. So if they try to send it in here, this Sweeper can cover like, um, it covers like this. Um, so they're going to have trouble getting in there for that air defense. We have a Seeking Air Mine, we have an Air Defense, and we have an Air Sweeper. And that should be the trio you use to defend the front side of your base. Seeking Air Mines, Air Defenses, and Sweepers. On the other side, we have, once again, Sweeper. Uh, we have Seeking Air Mine, which is in a Seeking Air Mine here. So pretty good coverage with Seeking Air Mines, plus um, Air Defenses as well. Now, straight up the middle, I guess, they could maybe get a little more value, but you still have multiple air defenses, and there's not quite as much to be gotten because you're not going to get one of those Inferno Towers uh, if you come up this way with the, uh, the Stone Slammer. So overall, we have it covered decently, I think, as good as you can have it covered for not having the single Inferno, which is probably the best counter to it, but the single Infernos are just too risky, I think, with the Bat Spell, and thus you have a bunch of Wizard Towers near them, which is another variation you could try, but I like the Multi-Infernos better at this state in the game. Also, something to keep in mind, um, this is a good counter right here, the Tornado Trap, that'll hold up the Stone Slammer for a while, so if you need that extra help on a side you think is vulnerable, you can keep it there. Now that's the front end, what about the back end? That's a little bit trickier to, to, um, to deal with, because the back end stone slammer, there's no air defenses. You want to try to put the rest of your seeking air mines. I think I have one here and one over here in likely locations where the stone slammer will be used. Another thing you want to do, and this base might not even be the best example, is you want to have these uh, defenses relatively spread out if you can 
in an area you think might be hit by a stone slammer that makes the slammer have to kind of move around more and also it won't get that splash damage because you don't want it like taking out multiple defenses at once that's a bad idea and that'll take you that'll hurt you quickly a good thing to defend um, the stone slammer on the back end is Tesla's they uh, make the pathing tough because it has to bounce between defenses more and you want to keep them uh, a good distance from other defenses to have them have to make that journey and to prevent the splash damage on your other nearby defenses. Um, but back end really it is tough for the most part. We have the queen which is a good thing to put on the back end to add that extra air DPS. But really, it remains to be seen exactly how powerful the Stone Slammer will be. I think people might try Queen Charges opposite side, or sorry, same side the Town Hall, because um, oftentimes the Spring Traps are over here. A lot of the anti-hog stuff is by the Town Hall because the Wall Wrecker pushes on the other side, uh, like that. So people might be using the Stone Slammer and a Queen Charge on the back end. And if that's the case, um, you want to have your Seeking Air Mines and those other things I talked about to try to defend that Stone Slammer and also spread out those Spring Traps a little more, knowing that people can now use a Siege Machine on the same side as the Town Hall because the Siege, ma siege Machine targets defenses, not the Town Hall like the other two, the Wall Wrecker and the Battle Blimp. Um, so that's something to think about for sure. Now, keep in mind we're still... You know, back of your mind, I know this is a lot of things to think about, but you're still defending the Sui Battle Blimp coming from uh, pretty much any angle that cuts by the Town Hall, uh, trying to take out um, Inferno Towers, trying to use the Electron strategy, and it's pretty similar defending the Battle Blimp and the Stone Slammer on the opposite Town Hall side because they're going to path pretty much the same into the base so that you can just kind of put Seeking Air Mines over on that side. You already have the air defense coverage. Um, but if anything, put the Seeking Air Mines more on the back end. This base might not even be the best example because it has a, quite a few Seeking Air Mines over here. But they can be used very well over here. And uh, a few of them will take out the Stone Slammer pretty quickly with the help of all this Archer Tower um, Expo DPS that's also over there. So... It is a lot, but it is doable, I think, to defend uh, effectively Town Hall 10 through 12 still. Now, I haven't mentioned the Ice Golem, and that's because I haven't seen it be that effective, but possibly, more importantly, there's not a whole lot you can do to defend it. Oftentimes, it's kind of luck, like where does it end up being killed, what's it end up freezing? So I wouldn't think about it at all, really, in terms of your base building. If someone is able to use it effectively, then hats off to them. Maybe it was luck, maybe it was intentional, but there's bigger things to defend at these top town hall levels than the Ice Golem. It's something that's nice keeping in your clan castle defensively if you suspect you'll get hit by a big kill squad, but know that if you have the Ice Golem in your CC, um, you're going to want to have maybe like a big dragon in there as well to counter some kind of attack that doesn't lure the CC and tries to lolo it. Um, I think an Ice Golem Dragon's a pretty powerful CC right now, so think about using that. Um, and you can use that at, I think, pretty much any Town Hall level above Town Hall 10 where you have that 35 troop space capacity in your clan castle. So that will do it. A lot of information, um, but like I said, this stuff all applies to Town Hall 10, 11, 12. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and let me know what other types of videos and content topics you guys want me to cover. Uh, moving forward after this nice update that's brought a lot of new things to think about into the game. So anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.